when we're going so I can say things and introduce things to peoples. It says on here. Wit, are you checking for liveness? <laughs> okay. oh, we're good. I think we're good. Well, let's wait till it's coming through. This is just, this is pre-roll. Nice. This is pre-show. We're giving pre people a behind the scenes. I mean, we're, we're, you know, a couple minutes late, so we don't want to make them wait any longer than we have to. That's true. I think I just got a notification that we're live. Are we live? We're live? No. Did you? Oh, no. No. <laughs> that was an email. That was an email. Dang. You got it? We're going? All right. Do cool. we look good? No. Well, that's fine. When I watch myself in that screen, I'm like delayed and I yeah, feel like it's I'm weird. Yeah, don't, don't watch that. Hey, welcome to Philbot Live. Or as, as I was gonna suggest we call it, Plastic Talk. <laughs> but that's probably not a good name. I, oh, I do know Car Talk. That's a good one. Car Talk was yeah. great. Car Talk was on for like 174 years. Are they still not on? Or they're, they, no, they they're retired. Off? They retired, but they had such a back catalog of shows that they just rerun them. Huh. And because the majority of value is entertainment rather than actual yes. car yes. stuff, they were still worth watching. So true, so true. All right, so uh, Phil about life. Phil about life. We're and gonna talk about bioplastics. Today. We are. Bioplastics are a very interesting plastic type. Mm -hmm. Last video we went over the different grades of oil-based plastics. I guess we yeah. call them that. Uh, recycling. Petro, petro petrochemical petro. plastic. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Recycle or uh, plastics with the recycling logo going from mm -hmm. one to seven. We talked about the general uh, uses of what they're used in, uh, a lot of food packaging. And if people um, didn't see that video, that's available still. You can watch that on our channel. And only for a limited time though. And then you have to pay nine ninety nine. Yeah. No, that's too red. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like an inappropriate a little bit thing? Yeah. All right. We're not going to go down any of these rabbit holes, which I'm going to be honest, is, is tough for you and I. We're, <laughs> we enjoy tangents. It's probably why we became friends. Okay, uh, but overview of bioplastics. Bioplastics. Yes, let's What's a bioplastic? Back. It's a plastic. Bioplastic is plastic. But what makes it a bioplastic versus a petro base? Yeah, so it is, uh, it's made, the carbon, because plastics are made from hydrocarbon, right. is uh, derived from re renewable resources. So like sugar, potatoes, corn, um, something you can grow and mm. has high sugar content. Uh, and then they, they get the carbon out and they can uh, formulate a plastic. Okay. Which still means that it's plastic. But, but when we say bioplastic, I think, you know, anytime we use the word bio to describe something, it sounds like it's alive, which if we think about plastic, I, you it's know, for dead. me, it sounds, <laughs> well, sure, plastic is pretty dead. But at the same time, when I think of bioplastic, it makes me think of something that is greener, more natural. Yeah, um, and I, I think through a lot of our research, we were contemplating if it is greener, right? We were looking at, does it use less oil? I think that was our, our contemplation early on, uh, but I think we both came to the same outcome that it is not, not, not even a little bit. Right, um, which is kind of sad. So we were kind of finding out, we, we don't have solid numbers on that. Um, so it, we're not making a definitive statement here, but uh, one thing we do want to make sure we're bringing up is that Bioplastics may not be as good as other plastics. I think we one of the things we talked about was was if you're going to apply that judgment, the short term value of that statement versus the longer term value. If we talk about bioplastics right now, they actually take more energy input to produce mm. than your traditional out of the ground petro based plastic. But like anything, which it 0.2% of the market, bioplastics are 0.2% of the market, like nothing, right? So if you end up with something that's plastic, it's probably not bioplastic. But like anything else, we've got to start somewhere. Right. So to, to get those into the market, get some acceptance, get people developing them, just like anything else, just like all our the systems, stuff that we're doing yeah. here with our systems. There's so much that we have to do that we have to figure things out. And for anybody out there that's been in manufacturing, or, or really any product production, you have the 80-20 rule. The 80% of your R&D, your, your initial investment to a product, tends to be recouped in the first 20% of things sold. So at 0.2%, we're really talking about the infancy of bioplastic. Right. So we haven't even come close to fixing the, issues the, the that scale, are, the economy yeah. piece, that hopefully when we look out 
longer may actually happen. Right. And, so, and I think that, you know, that point is that bioplastics, they, they divert us away from using oil, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. And I think as, as what, you know, speaking to what you're bringing up is that as that technology gets better, bioplastics will have a better place where they're not, you know, using direct oil, sure. it's using um, these other carbon sources. Um, well, I wanted to bring up a very simple uh, example of a, a material that has an interesting, it's a, a conundrum, right? Mm. It's the coffee cup that has, that is lined with PLA. So PLA is a common material, 3D printing, common material that we work with. Uh, I think we have some on the table. This is probably PLA. We definitely have some on the table. Um, so this, you know, a coffee cup, they, they sell it as compostable, right? You're talking about like, like a paper a, coffee a paper, cup. Yeah, but, paper, yeah, paper cup. The good cup. ones, not the ones that, the, that <laughs> if you leave the coffee in there for, you know, three minutes, it starts to leak through. Not that one, no, okay. no. But the one that maybe has like that little fuzzy texture on the outside? Yeah, I mean, I a think- A little bit of a coating? There, there's Your a coffee range tastes funny cups. after you, maybe when we, you put it in that cup? We should find a photo of that and put it online. Okay. But, but the reason, what I want to bring up there is they, they put a label on the side of it that says like compostable, mm. right? And that is a huge statement that I don't think should be on there because right. you were looking up like yeah. case by case uh, composting and biodegradability right. of these products. Right. And some bioplastics are not designed to be biodegradable. Like we have a material that's, that's the PETG. Uh, the supplier says it's bioplastic, but that stuff isn't, that's not going to degrade. Right. So the, the major thing, and this is one of the things that we want to make sure everyone understands, is that there is a disconnect between what we mean when we say bioplastic and what we hear as consumers when we hear bioplastic. When we hear bioplastic, we tend to think about it's compostable, it's biodegradable. And, right. and even when I say compostable, oh, I have a compost a in my backyard. You know, I would love to be able to take, you know, this spool of filament and throw it in there with my eggshells and my my rotten mushrooms right. and you know spin it around and in a couple of weeks have stuff that I can throw on my flowers but that's not what it means compostable in in respect to bioplastic really means at some point in some way under some controlled condition it can be composted right but there's a dramatic difference between the composting that we might do at home and an industrial scale compost, compost facility. facility that Compost plastic. And then I, I think if you look further out, we're getting a little away from the coffee cup. We'll come back to that in a second. Is that like, I don't think the systems are in place to have that coffee. Well, I, we're already back to the coffee cup. We don't really have those systems in place to, to take that biodegradable polymer that's sprayed inside of this cup to get it into a recycling facility or a compost facility where it's going to break down because it's two tenths of, of a percent of the market. That too. And it's just like, there's, there's, it, oh, greenwashing. That was the word. Greenwashing. I, I think, it's, I think it's greenwashing. It's, it's just like, you know, you, you have, oh, this is a green product and you, you slap mm, it on the sure. product and, and that's what sells it, right? When, when you look at the actual- This is a green product. I know, but that's because it's actually <laughs> green. Um, but when you not look at- Not the same thing. <laughs> not the same thing. Uh, when you look at, all the things we're talking about and really dive into it, I think that's when you start to see if it's a true, truly good material. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was going with the coffee cup. But uh, the other piece was that, how do you get the plastic off of the cardboard and then what ink is in the cardboard on the lettering? And right. it's just this, it's this whole thing that, uh, I, it doesn't, doesn't sit right with me. It's just like, like how, can they, how can they say this? So that's, that's a few things about. Uh, well, I think they can up. say that, you know, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a moment because yeah, if you look at it from, again, from the short term, if we, if we focus on the short term, that cup is less recyclable mm -hmm. because of the addition of that plastic. But in order for there to be the demand to recycle it, the ability to recycle it, there has to be enough of it coming through the waste stream. Right, to make it viable. To, to make it viable. Otherwise, you know, the alternative is that we're, we're saving up those cups for the day. You know, I've got a warehouse in my plastic How cups coffee waiting. Cups? Yeah. You know, it's, it's floor to ceiling with, with these green You can build a house cups. out of it. 
maybe there's a lot of ways you could upcycle the cups. I mean, who knows? Right, right. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you could you could take this, and I think if you, you know, the folks, we Tyler and I had a bit of a chat beforehand as we were talking about what was going to happen, and and trying to Kevin was there, who's behind the camera. Say hi, Kevin. Hi. There we go. I don't think anyone heard that. It's, hi. <laughs> That was creepy. That was. But one of the things we kept coming back to was that if you focus too short term right. on the problem, it becomes incredibly depressing. And that the longer out you look, because let's be honest, anything, if I leave, you know, if I leave this, this spool of plastic here long enough, it'll degrade. It might be 10,000 years, it might be 100,000 years. But assuming you believe in evolution and that the earth has been here for a long time, that's a drop in the bucket. Right. Right. So it, it's, it all depends on your perspective of, of the scale of time. So okay. don't lose too much heart. Doesn't mean that we don't work on these problems. Doesn't mean we're not working on these problems here. I mean, this is a good, good time to yeah, mention. Yeah, I think like, that's a great time. So this is an example of a bioplastic that... And we this were, is like our involvement with bioplastics. Yeah. What we're learning and how we're dealing yeah. with it. Yeah, we're not just here complaining and, and turning out machines. We spend a tremendous amount of our resources, time, money, etc., uh, to learn about this stuff and learn what works. And so here we have an example of a bioplastic that was mailed to us. And apparently it looks edible. It, it, I don't it, see how it looks that looks like edible. Quinoa. It's gray, but it looks like quinoa. Like, I feel like I could steam this a bit. And... Let's touch it. Can we touch it? Oh. It kind of it kind of looks like uh, cat litter now. We... I think we've had a customer ask if we can use these pellets as cat litter. No, don't, don't. Do no, that to your no. cat. That's a bad idea. Right. Um, but you know, it, it's it's not. We're not talking about this particular plastic so much as an example. As this is an example of what we do here, and it's because of what we've talked about today that we do this. Because the more we know about plastics and how they work and how to recycle them. You know, we're, we're sharing that information. I mean, right. you're, ne you're never going to see, well, correct me if I'm wrong, you're never going to see a white paper from Philbop that's, that if you pay $9.99, you're, $9 you're going to learn how to recycle this plastic. Like, that's not our mission. No. We'll be turning that in. We always have and always will turn that information out. Out to the world. Because use. we feel important yeah. about that. That's our purpose for doing what we do. Right. And I think what our mission, you know, our, our mission, it's, it's on the walls around here. And, and something we talk about all the time is utilizing the widest range of plastics, right? And we do that through building this hardware to use these small volumes of plastic. Like, we could make a bunch of spools out of this material right here. And that would be, you know, you can't do that in a larger facility. Right. So kind of tying our systems back to the bioplastic side, these systems allow you to really test out those materials. And yeah. it's allowed us to see what the intricacies of all these issues are and uh, learn about really what the, what the right steps are with this material, with, with plastic as a whole. Yeah. The more we know about plastic and how they work, how they can be recycled, the more we can turn that information back out to the world, right. the more other people can expand on the that information, develop new plastics, and the sooner we will solve this problem, this overall problem of getting plastic back into use rather than just right. where do we store it. And we were also talking about uh, a lot of times when we talk about recycling, this is, mm. this is kind of getting off topic from bioplastics, but right. when we talk about recycling, a lot of times it's downcycled. So mm -hmm. you'll have a, a soda bottle that gets, uh, you know, downcycled into decking, right? Or sure. a park bench, right? Um, the really exciting thing that we do here is like, I love that we're able to actually convert it into, you know, take a dirty material, grind it, filter it, turn it back into filament and make like a useful object. And I think that is like, that's so exciting. And uh, it's because we have these smaller machines to do it. So yeah, I like that piece. So there we go. There we go. Bioplastics. Bioplastics. They're not as bio as we would like to believe based on the name. And, and you know, I, I hope we could find, find answers. We, we still have a lot of answers on the bioplastic side. Sure. You know, we have a lot of research that we, while we've been in the area a lot, we don't know about it fully. Like we're not fully versed on it. Um, but as we go and learn more, we'll definitely update our viewers and, yeah. um, you know, put it out to the world. But we really just want to be, uh, knowledgeable in what we're working with and, and know how to process it. So, so awesome. 
you know, maybe if somebody out there is an expert in bioplastics and, and you have some information to share with us, or maybe we even coordinate one of these videos where we have a caller, know, where, where we, we tie you in by phone or something, you know, we're always looking to share the information that we have with everybody out there. So if, if you are an expert in this field or, you know, maybe something else that you think might yeah. be appropriate, please reach out to us, you know, go to fillbot.com and, and get to us from something on there. Be awesome. Uh, before we close, do we have any questions? No? No questions. Because we answered everything so well. Wow, we are so good. I'm, I'm so tempted to just like... Eat one? Right, no, just like make words out of these. Just be like... Yeah. Oh, that's so much faster than what I was doing. I was gonna line them up like this. But there we go. F for Philbot! Boom! Yay! All right, thanks everybody. All right.